there are many people walking around with the hateful things their lovers once said to them. Because they find it hard to let go, they find it hard to heal. In this episode, we ask people to share the most hateful things their partners have said to them so other people can read and help them heal. My mom's death hit me harder than anything. For days, I couldn't breathe properly. I'm asthmatic, so I started having a series of attacks. My boyfriend at that time was also not doing enough to help. Whenever I visited him for his company, all he wanted was to use me to warm his bed, and I always declined. I told him it wasn't a good time for intimacy, and he got angry and ignored me. A week after my mom was buried, I was still not having it easy. He came to me looking for sex and I pushed him away. He screamed, why are you behaving like I'm the one who killed your mom? Are you the only person whose mother is dead? Can't we leave because she's dead? I walked away from him and never returned. I walked away from him and never returned. That's, that's the best thing you could do. Trust me, if I was the one, I would do the same thing. It's actually sad that someone can be this self-centered because for someone to overlook what you're going through and actually say this to you, he's a very self-centered and selfish person. So leaving him is actually the best decision you can make. Imagine getting married to someone like this. I mean, I don't think you would be happy for the rest of your life, so let him go. I think it's a good thing. She was cheating on me with a rich man. I caught her twice and she apologized. I forgave her because she promised it was never going to happen again. And then I caught her the third time. I was ready to forgive her because I loved her so much. But this time, she didn't apologize. She, she told me, it's not my fault that you can't afford to make me happy. If you get money, I won't cheat on you again. She made me feel like I didn't deserve love because I was poor. I held on for a while until things naturally fell apart. I'm happy now without her. I'll look at it first of all. I mean, love is a decision. You, you, you decide you want to love someone unconditionally. And um, I think when that time comes and you think you can't love the person for who they are, for the circumstances they find themselves in, it's always better to just, you know, cut the chase and save everybody the heartache and the inconveniences. I'm just imagining what he has to go through. You know, guys, we are very possessive and um, when another guy happens to come into our territory and invade what we feel belongs to us, it's very hard to take. So for this young guy to have witnessed the first one, the second one, and the third one, and then that wasn't even the end of it. He, he waited for extra, extra time, <laughs> you know, but I think um, that was very cruel. I'm happy he says he's happy right now, and I think he's learned a very big lesson, and um, I hope he finds love. And for this lady, uh, she could have, you know, spare him all the heartaches, and look, say, um, I don't think he can provide for me, and it's one of, you know, my topmost reasons for being in this relationship, so I can't be with you. Fair enough, I mean, we all want good things for ourselves, but why would you still be with him? and then see someone else. My boyfriend cheated and we broke up. Two months later, he came back looking remorseful. I gave him a second chance. Three months later, he ghosted me for one whole month. I didn't know his whereabouts. I was there when he came back with flimsy excuses. I loved him. So I forgave him. A couple of months later, I found out he had impregnated another woman. I was so angry. I called to tell him it was over. He said, we've dated for three years. If you're a real woman, you would have gotten pregnant by now. How will I know you have a womb when you haven't gotten pregnant all this while? I broke down. The sad thing was, 
I believed him. I believed I was incapable of getting pregnant, so I was careless in my next relationship. I got pregnant, and now I'm a single mother. I understand the pain that you you must have experienced or you went through. I mean, after you had you know that news that your boyfriend has impregnated someone and it's valid it's it's understandable because um it's never easy when you give your trust to someone and you know they end up um, abusing the trust that you've given them your past is your past and so whatever you've gone through with your ex-boyfriend should be in the past now you're a mother and that's where we should focus on now you're a single mother the fact that you're a single mother doesn't end there and this is where you have to you know really push yourself um, empower yourself, be the better version of yourself. I was sexually abused when I was a child. Nobody believed me when I opened up. The only person who believed me was my mom, but she made matters worse by asking me not to say it anywhere that my uncle had abused me. It became my burden, something I had to carry all my life. I hated my mom for, doing, for not doing anything about it. I hated my life and hated men. This guy came into my life at some point and made me trust him with all I had. He was the only one I could confide in, so I did. He said sorry, wiped off my tears, and gave me a warm embrace. We had a heated argument one day and he told me, I believe you lured your uncle into whatever he did to you. You are evil. He's my ex now. I forgive easily, but I'll never forgive that boy. Okay. Personally, I have had I have had the experience of sharing some details with someone and then it being used against you another time, much to their convenience. So I really understand her saying that she won't forgive the guy. It's it's not it's not easy to let this out, to tell somebody that this is what I went through, and then later the person comes back to use it against you. It's not easy. But what I would tell the girl is that you need to work on yourself. There are some things they say that you need to carry to your grief. And so I believe that if she works on herself, if, she, if she's able to forgive herself, if she's able to come to terms with the fact that this thing happened in my life, it is a part of my story. I have come to terms with it. I'm not going to let it affect my life. I'm not going to let it affect my relationship. I'm not going to let it affect anything I do. When she comes to that realization, I think that it will be, it will be better if she keeps it to herself because you, it is you that it happened to. You have come to terms with it. So there's no point telling somebody because today somebody could be a friend, tomorrow the person could be a fool. You don't know what people are going to use your information for. So sometimes, some things are best kept secret. Some things are best kept to the grave. So you keep this to yourself. You, you work on it. If it's therapy, whatever she can go through so that she comes to terms with the fact that this is what I went through. She overcomes it. She accepts it as part of her story. I think it will be best. And then she doesn't tell anybody again.